it's Reija and welcome to another video. Today I am going to be sharing with you all the books that I read in the month of January. I read six books in total, so I would classify that as an extremely good reading month. And without further ado, let's get started. The first book that I read during January was Interference by Sue Burke. This is the continuation and the conclusion to the Semiosis duology. And as you might know, I absolutely loved Semiosis. It was one of my favorite books of last year. And Interference had really big shoes to fill. And I'm happy to inform you that Although I didn't enjoy it quite as much as Semiosis, it was still so good. It continues on with the themes of language and uh, cultural exchange and learning to communicate with, with each other, not only uh, with people from the same species and the same community as you, but also from uh, people and species outside of your community. It is also about projection and information bias as these um, humans from Earth come to PAX to conduct a scientific uh, to conduct scientific research and to make contact with uh, the people living in PAX as colonists and uh, the. Earth humans have basically, they have their own set of biases against the people from Pax. And the Pax people also have a lot of biases against the Earth humans, uh, as we established in semiosis. So there is so much tension in the air and so, so many opportunities for miscommunication. And I think that by having both um, both glassmaker Pax and Earth point of views, uh, Suberg manages to navigate all of the different aspects of the conflict marvelously. I will say that I preferred the way that Semiosis handled the progression of time. This uh, what, semiosis was a more um, timeless story in a way that it takes place during multiple generations, so it doesn't feel hurried or rushed. Uh, it takes uh, it takes time with the pace of the plants, whereas interference is much more. Um, immediate. It is told in the span of a few months, basically. Um, but uh, it's, it's not the same as semiosis, but it is a very satisfying conclusion. And um, it's, it feels immediate. It feels like there's a lot of tension. Sometimes it feels a little bit too rushed. And also at the end, some things... Um, come off as a little bit too convenient. But at the same time, I feel like the very last chapter of the book, the very ending of the duology, really ties everything together and it was um, really riveting. So I ended up giving uh, Interference four stars. I really loved both of the books and I will be getting my own copies of them. The next book that I finished was Bill Bryson's A Short History of Nearly Everything. I also listened to this one on audio, so I had both the physical book and the audiobook. And I think that the audiobook is really well narrated, and the uh, narrator puts a lot of emotion and um, inflection into the stories, and it feels really engaging. However, I do feel that sometimes he went a little overboard with the accents, especially with some of the French scientists. So um, maybe maybe uh, lessen the impact of the accents, please. Like I don't think I don't think nonfiction needs accents. If you establish 
that here is a French scientist living in France. I can therefore infer that he most likely was a French speaking person. I don't need the accent. Okay? Um, but yeah, uh, a short history of nearly everything uh, is basically what it says on the tin. It's a short history of nearly everything focusing on uh, the creation of life, how this planet got started, and it goes chronologically uh, through the scientific process of how uh, human scientists um, came to uh, discover things about the natural world. So while it goes through all of the historical things, I think that the best aspects of this book were the bits about the scientific community through the various ages and how biased and how petty uh, scientists and naturalists really were and how there was a serious uh, competition between people to get the glory and get their name out there when they made these discoveries. Uh, so that actually had an impact on what was being discovered, what was being suppressed, and what was being made available for public uh, to know. So I think that this was really interesting. I think it was really engaging. And I feel like I will end up... Uh, browsing and leafing through this from time to time to uh, refresh my memories about certain aspects. Uh, one of, some of my favorite bits uh, from this book were the sheer unluckiness of all of the French scientific expeditions of the 19th century. The French just didn't have any luck. Everything they tried to do seemed to go to shit um, some way or another. And uh, also the fact that dust is made up of dead skin cells for the most part. That was a gross um, fact that uh, I was not sure I wanted to know, but now I know. And also just the fact that we don't know nearly as much about human evolution as we think we do. That was also another interesting thing. And while this book uh, is a little bit outdated in some aspects, I definitely noticed a few bits uh, where some of the information um, has changed or that we know, um, we know of the topic uh, much more now than we did when this book was published. But all in all, still really enjoyable. I gave this four stars and I would recommend it. Next book that I finished was Autonomous by Annalie Nuitz. Uh, this was their debut novel and I bought this in the year that it came out, uh, which was in 2017, I want to say, or 2018. Um, but in any case, um, I have been meaning to read this ever since and only now got uh, time to do it and the opportunity to do it and this was actually really good like this is basically a bridge between really high concept hard science fiction and slice of life science fiction it is told very um in a sort of popcorny casual way all of the point of view characters use very casual language and uh they are very Mm, easy to approach, uh, but at the same time the concepts in this book are super complex and high-end in a sense. There's like um, gene hacking, um, there's uh, re uh, reverse engineering pharmaceutical drugs, there's colonization of Mars that's just thrown out there in an offhand. There's like these um, trade federations that, like, the world has split into different federations. The United States doesn't exist anymore. The South Americas are their own federation. Uh, there's a trade federation in Africa. And, and there's, like, a lot of um, various concepts that this book tackles. 
and I thought that it was really good. And there's also a lot of like talk of um, gender through the uh, lens of the uh, AI character in this, which is a robot. And robots don't generally have gender, and this talks about labels and how um, the some like the labels that are put upon this robot character are for the pen benefit of its human con companion, and it deals with topics like that, and it's it's really uh, fascinating. I found myself thoroughly enjoying this book. Um, there are some issues that I did, didn't, I wasn't completely on board with, like the fact that every single uh, chapter begins with uh, a date. For example, um, uh, the book starts, the story starts on July 1st, 2144. Uh, okay? And then later it's like at the very end it's july 16th but even in this first chapter we are already um seeing things from like three weeks later in a sense um and it made me uh, really confused as to the time frame i felt that the inclusion of dates uh, was really superfluous and made no sense when you actually read the story and realize that things are taken taking much more time than is uh, referenced through the dates. So I think that that was a very unnecessary and confusing, confusing, confusing inclusion of data that wasn't at all necessary. So I end up giving this book uh, four stars, uh, highly enjoyed it, and would recommend. The next book I read was Time Management for System Administrators by Thomas A. Limoncelli, and I actually DNF this book. This time I got far more into it than 15 pages, uh, but I ended up uh, putting this down at around the halfway mark. Pretty much at the time uh, that I got to the uh, script and actual coding portion of the book. I felt that this book um, is very outdated. It was published 14 years ago, which is basically a millennia in terms of like time in tech. Um, all of, Basically all of the script and shell script um, codes are outdated in terms of syntax and how we use to like how we automate systems nowadays so um you can sort of um take inspiration as to what what the author wants you to do with the code but you can't actually use said code to do things because it is outdated and you can't use it as is also I feel like this book is written uh, for a neurotypical audience because uh, I stumbled a lot when it came to understanding how I, a person with ADHD, uh, could uh, take action with some of the um, suggestions that the author makes about time management. I feel like this book is very much a book equivalent of the meme, draw a circle, now draw the rest of the fucking owl. There's lots of advice, there's lots of rules and like suggestions on what to do, but a lot of it's not at all actionable. There aren't, there aren't steps to uh, manifest those ideas in reality, so they're basically like a sentence like, go fuel your car um, on Sundays instead of mornings or something and and uh, write everything down so so there's like there's like suggestions but those are but but not actual like actionable advice on how to accomplish those end goals so 
there's a list of end goals, but not routes on how to get there. So I ended up DNFing this, and I feel like if I want to learn about time management, this isn't the book to do it. The next book that I read was The Black Guard's Drums by B. Jelly Clark. This is a novella published by Tor, and I loved it. I loved it so much. I gave this five stars. Uh, I feel like this is a very solid, concrete story that um, is very tightly paced, tightly packed. It packs a lot of world building in this, like, what's it, 100 or something? Yeah, 100 pages uh, of a book. It's basically, like, what would happen if gods... Uh, like, if African gods spoke through, uh, basically, like, avatars, in a sense, like, they, they, like, they, parts of various gods would manifest through, uh, human vessels. And our main character is a girl called Creeper, her real name is Jacqueline, but, um, she prefers to be called Creeper, and she's basically a street urchin in, uh, sovereign city-state of New Orleans and the instead of ending the American Civil War is still going strong and the uh, Confederates are basically trying to get their hands on a weapon that was used by Haiti during the slave rebellion and uh, this book is such a treat, like strong world building, strong character voice. Um, Creeper is a very interesting, very scrappy, very like cunning main character, uh, but she's also very childlike. She is uh, like a 12, 13 year old girl, so she doesn't understand everything, but She's also very street smart, so she can't be fooled with the same means as many children would normally, because she has grown up um, on the streets and she's she's grown up very uh, tenacious and uh, she hasn't really learned how to rely on other people. And there's magic, there's like um, there's lots of queer characters, and they just are there. I, I, like, I, I can't help it. I, I really love it. And just, like, I want to read so many more things in this world. Like, I feel like this world needs so many more novellas, so, so many more novels. Like, I can, I can picture that this world is more than what is contained on these pages, you know? So, like, there is so many more stories to be told in this world, and I love this. Love this so much. Uh, and yeah, I gave it five stars. Mmm, so good. And the very last book that I read during the month of January was Red Sister. I actually finished this on January, but I started it back in August, and I just parked it. So I pretty much listened to, like, uh, I want to say 50% of it in January. And I listened to it on audio because it was available in script. And I have to say, the audio was very good. The narrator does all these accents and all these voices for the different characters. And they were very serviceable. And I felt the emotional pull and the audio was fantastic. But I have to say, I am not as in love with the story as many others have been. This was a three and a half star book for me. I liked it. I liked the world building. I love that it is a fantasy world with a sort of science fiction history behind it. Like, it is known history that the people that populate this place came from the stars and came or on spaceships from other planets. And there are these sort of supernatural abilities that various people have, and they're basically 
um, bred down from these uh, spacefaring peoples that inhabited this planet. And it is such an interesting concept, and there are so many interesting things that could be done with it, but I just feel that this book was... it wasn't finished. It follows like two different timelines, and this first book doesn't satisfyingly end either of them. Like normally I would expect that the first book, while it leaves threads to be explored in the second and third and whatever many books the series has, but it still needs to have, a sat have satisfying character arcs for all of the characters, and it needs to tie in some threads that the first book stands on its own. But the fact is that this book doesn't stand on its own, like, it ends, like, in the middle of a scene. And I was like, eh, like, like, too bad, like, if I didn't like this book, I don't know if I would want to continue it, you know? Because I was like, eh, well, there, there wasn't anything satisfying in the ending. Um, but I did enjoy it enough, and I thought that it was better than middling, so I will continue on in the series, but I, as I said, I'm not as in love with it as many others have been. And there you have it, those were all of the books that I read during January. Now, you may be wondering where is February's TBR Jenga, and to that I will say that TBR Jenga will be back in March. Uh, both Vold and I have been very busy this month. There are like lots of shenanigans that both of us are up to this month, so we haven't had time to film anything or even talk about the TBR, which is all well and good. I am enjoying the fact that my birthday month is a month where I can... Um, read whatever I want, so I will take that as I will. Um, and yeah, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up, and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye bye!